Hello students. Today we will discuss about bus bar and line protection. As you all know that uh, bus bar and line protection and transmission line whether or it is distribution lines uh, plays a vital role in supply of the electricity. So in this uh, lecture we will focus on bus bar and line protection. So in the first part we will discuss about bus bar protection and different schemes and in the second part we will discuss about line protection and the different schemes that is used uh, for transmission line protection. First we discuss uh, some introduction about the bus bars. As we all know that uh, bus bar play a vital role in transmission of uh, electricity from generating stations to local domestic use. So we can say that it is an important component of uh, power supply. Uh, generally bus bar is a metallic strip of copper or uh, majorly some any other conductor uh, or you can say a group of conductor which is used for electrical power distribution or sometimes uh, it will uh, act as a junction or node. The bus bars that makes the electrical power distribution much easier, uh, less expensive and more flexible. Uh, there are various type of bus bars used in uh, housed in switch gear, panel boards, uh, bus phase and you can say that uh, uh, local grid station. Uh, it can be divided into high level voltage bus bar and low level uh, voltage bar. But uh, uh, in this lecture uh, we will not go in the detail of um, uh, how bus bar works or how it functions because we will focus on uh, its protection, how it is protected. Uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, an overview, uh, we know that uh, there are various type of electrical bus bar uh, used in power system. There are different types like some of uh, a single bus bar arrangement, uh, you can see double bus, uh, double bar uh, breaker arrangement and uh, uh, one and half breaker uh, arrangement scheme that is mostly used. Uh, ring main arrangement is also used. So there are uh, different type of schemes that are uh, used in bus bars. Along with that uh, uh, famous single line diagrams uh, that you will study in your uh, distribution system course uh, about how the single line diagram uh, will drawn. Uh, in case of the material, most commonly uh, copper met metallic strips or aluminum metallic strips are used in bus bar. The size of the bus bar uh, and the cross section areas uh, designed by the maximum amount of current that can be uh, carried by bus bar easily. So uh, this is uh, uh, a very uh, basic uh, uh, introduction about bus bars so we can uh, proceed to uh, its protection schemes. Like we discussed in our uh, last slide about uh, some of the basics about bus bar, uh, there are some important uh, features about bus bar and you can say uh, the types uh, or you can say the subsection. Uh, mainly we deal in three sections. We have generator bus uh, which is uh, commonly known as generation bus. We have load bus and we have slag bus. Uh, as the name suggests the generation bus also known as uh, PV bus um, in this voltage magnitude 
correspondent uh, to its rating which is specified and voltage magnitude which is maintained constant by uh, injection of reactive power same is the case you have load bus uh, it is called as pq bus and uh, this power the active and reactive power is injected into the network uh, the third one is slag bus it absorbs or emits the active or reactive power uh, from the power system it doesn't carry any load uh, in this uh, the magnitude and the phase angle uh, of the voltage is specified so uh, when we talk about buses uh, these three uh, major uh, sections of the bus uh, should be in focused because uh, they have different type of faults um, one more uh, we uh, can use is uh, voltage control bus which is not uh, uh, much common like a load bus and later bus and slag bus so they are very important and uh, from generating stations to distribution setups uh, you have to deal with uh, these bus bars and uh, so many faults uh, occurs uh, on these uh, bus bars and uh, how we can protect them from these uh, faults we will discuss in uh, next slide like uh, in our very first lecture of this course uh, we have studied about uh, what is the requirement of a good protection system uh, we studied different type of parameters that is need to be uh, there uh, while establishing a good protection system so in the case of bus bar uh, there are some requirements uh, that needs to be fulfilled like we have uh, number one speed uh, limit damage at fault point and uh, limit the effect on uh, fault stability the second one is selectivity as we all know that the selectivity is very important because uh, if the protection system uh, select the wrong zone due to any reason so it will damage the whole system so there is uh, trip only the faulted equipment or uh, important for bus bars uh, divided into zones because zones are very important and these zones uh, we have studied in our uh, distance protection lecture same is the case you have uh, stability uh, like uh, not to operate for faults outside the zone like if your system is not uh, stable enough and uh, it responds uh, to some false stripping so definitely it will disturb the supply and when the supply is disturbed uh, the consumer uh, will also get disturbed same is the case the industry get uh, shut down uh, the second one is stability must be guaranteed uh, in industrial processes uh, where the uh, continuous electric supply uh, is the key uh, to run the process so at that uh, point the stability uh, is important uh, so we have to make sure that uh, to avoid any type of false tripping uh, the fourth and the last one is the reason for loss of stability interruption of CT circuits imbalance accidental operation during testing so uh, there are several reasons uh, that we can say uh, become the major uh, part of loss of stability which cause interruption of CT circuits uh, PT circuits along with that accidental operation during testing and uh, so forth and so more so uh, we have to uh, deal with this uh, requirements and we have to fulfill this and uh, remember students uh, fulfilling these requirements uh, is not easy so while designing any type of uh, protection system you have to uh, be aware of these parameters and uh, because uh, some of the parameters uh, if you work on it uh, it will increase the cost also so 
we have to be uh, uh, we have to be very aware that our cost should not exceed and uh, we have a economical uh, protection system well uh, if we talk about schemes of bus fire protection remember these are the schemes of the bus fire protections we because we are discussing the bus fire protection scheme there are two most commonly uh, used scheme uh, that is uh, being utilized for bus fire protection are differential protection and fault bus protection so how these schemes work uh, we will discuss in our next slide so first we will study about uh, differential protection well the differential protection is the basic method for bus power protection uh, in which uh, like in our previous lecture of uh, differential protection we see that uh, uh, mm -hmm. we will see that about the current entering and leaving the bus are totalized during normal load conditions uh, the sum of these current is equal to zero uh, when a fault occurs the fault current upsets the balance and produce a uh, different uh, current to operate a relay so we are quite familiar uh, with this uh, differential protection scheme but uh, that differential protection scheme is generalized in this case uh, we are dealing with only the uh, bus power protection well let's explain uh, the differential scheme in terms of uh, bus power as you can see uh, in the figure which shows a single line diagram of the uh, current of the differential scheme of a station bus power the bus power is fed by a generator and uh, supplies load to two lines well the secondaries of the current transformer in the generator led in line 1 and line 2 are all connected in parallel uh, so the protected relay is connected across this uh, parallel uh, connection as you can see in the figure all cities must be of the same ratio as we discussed earlier in the scheme regardless of capacities of the various circuits so what will happen under normal load conditions or external fault conditions the sum of the currents uh, entering the bus is equal to those leaving it uh, and no current flow through the relay this is the most common uh, you can say the principle uh, so whenever uh, a fault occurs within the protected zone uh, the current entering the bus will no longer be equal to those leaving it so the difference of these current will flow through the relay and cause the opening of the generator circuit breaker and each of the line of the circuit breaker so students uh, uh, this is just a basic scheme because we are quite familiar with the differential protection so uh, there is no much uh, difficulty uh, to understand this uh, in the terms of bus power protection and those who are who, can, who are facing problem regarding this um, they can refer back to uh, our lecture regarding uh, differential relays the second scheme is fault bus protection well it is possible to design a station so that the faults that develop are mostly earth faults uh, so this can be achieved by providing earth metal barrier known as fault bus surrounding uh, each conductor throughout its entire length in the bus structure. Now with this arrangement every fault that might occur must involve a connection between a conductor and a earth metal part. So uh, by directing the flow of uh, earth fault current uh, it is possible to uh, detect the fault and determine their location so uh, that's why this type of uh, protection is known as uh, fault bus protection uh, in next slide we will see how this uh, fault protection scheme work uh, by its schematic diagram so as you can see from the diagram 
which shows the schematic arrangement of uh, uh, fault bus protection. You can see the metal uh, supporting structure uh, or you can see the fault bus is earthed through a current transformer CT and uh, a relay is connected across the secondary of this CT. So what will happen uh, under normal operating condition uh, there is no current flow uh, from the fault bus to ground and the relay remains unoperative. Uh, in the second case when a fault occurs uh, uh, for example a fault involving a connection uh, between a conductor and uh, uh, earth supporting structure will result in current to flow to ground through the fault bus causing the relay to operate so uh, this will operate uh, the relay and so if the relay is operate the relay will trip all the breakers connecting equipment to the bus so this is very important uh, as you can see in the figure uh, there are two conductors and uh, same is the case you have the uh, supporting uh, structures that most commonly uh, known as insulators that is uh, made up of ceramics or porcelain so this is the main, uh, main setup uh, of uh, this protection scheme uh, that is known to be uh, fault bus protection. So these are the two schemes. Uh, you can see the two basic and most commonly uh, used scheme for bus bar protection. Uh, well, now we will discuss about line protection. Uh, line protection we uh, say about the majorly we will discuss about transmission line protection so we will discuss uh, first briefly that uh, what is the present structure we have in our country in terms of transmission lines so we have uh, 132 kV transmission line we have uh, 220 kV transmission line and we have 500 kV transmission line so when we talk about its protection uh, there are different strategies there are different requirements that we have to follow uh, to fill to fulfill the demand of the protection again uh, we will not discuss the parameters of transmission lines that uh, how we will design the transmission line or uh, how we can design the transmission line pole uh, what is the distance between two poles so this is because this is out of scope um, from our subject so we will only focus on uh, the transmission line protection and uh, what are the different methods uh, of line protection well uh, before uh, going into the details of the protection methods we will discuss about uh, some basic requirements of the line protection so we have divided into the three uh, main points of the requirements first we have uh, like in the event of short circuit the circuit breaker close set to the fault should open uh, all other circuit breakers remaining in a closed position so uh, this is the first requirement uh, in easy word we can say uh, there must be no false tripping only the faulted section uh, or transmission line should be open second in case the nearest breaker to the fault fails to open backup protection should be provided by the adjacent circuit breaker this is very important uh, like uh, uh, in the cricket we have seen that we have a backup fielder uh, in the that case uh, we in distance protection we have uh, uh, in our previous lecture we discuss about different zones like zone 1 2 3 so if zone 1 fail zone 3 uh, uh, zone 2 and if zone 2 fail there are zone 3 so this is called the backup protection because the transmission lines are very critical and the backup protection is very important uh, the third one is 
the relay operating time should be just as short as possible in order to preserve system stability without unnecessary tripping of circuits so uh, this is our uh, major concern that the operating time should be minimum should be minimum as possible because we want our fault to be detected um, for we can say in microseconds in milliseconds in seconds so the quicker uh, we will uh, detect our fault uh, less the problem we will face uh, while uh, while tripping the circuits because as we all know that the circuit breaker the relay uh, all these uh, equipment will take their operating time so in transmission lines the milliseconds the seconds are very important uh, in the whole operation so these are some major requirements of the line protection uh, we have to take an account while designing any protection scheme for the light protection there are uh, different methods uh, used for transmission line protection some of the methods we will discuss is uh, time graded overcurrent protection and uh, number two is differential protection and number three is distance protection all of uh, these method we will discuss in details with proper explanation of each method so first we have the time graded overcurrent protection well in this scheme of overcurrent protection time discrimination is on in incorporated and what is the time discrimination i remember uh, the chapter uh, the lecture for overcurrent protection you will find the time discrimination and methods uh, so in other words the time setting of the relay is so graded that uh, in the event of fault the smallest possible part of the system is isolated uh, to understand this time graded overcurrent protection uh, we have divided uh, this overcurrent protect, uh, protection scheme into uh, different sections uh, like we will discuss uh, radial uh, feeder and uh, um, there are uh, different uh, subtypes of radial feeders uh, along with that we will discuss the parallel feeder and we will discuss the uh, ring main system also so first we will if we will talk about the radial feeder uh, the main characteristic of the radial system is that the power can flow only in one direction from generator or supply and to the load this is the basic structure of the radial feeder uh, it has some disadvantages uh, that continuity of the supply cannot be maintained uh, at the receiving end in the event of fault so this scheme uh, time graded uh, protection of a radial feeder uh, we have divided into two major subsection that is definite time relays and the inverse time relay so uh, we will discuss first about uh, the definite time relay uh, like uh, as you can see in the figure which shows the overcurrent protection of a radial feeder by definite time relay and what is definite time relay uh, you can recall our overcurrent protection lecture uh, the time of the operation of each relay uh, is fixed and is independent of operating current so uh, the relay d has an operating time of uh, 0.5 seconds while for other relays time delay is uh, successively increased by 0.5 second so if the fault occurs in the section as you can see from the figure de it will cleared in 0.5 second by the relay and circuit breaker at d uh, why this is happen why this happen because all other relays have higher operating time so in this way only section de of the system will be isolated so if the relay at d fails to trip 
the relay at C will operate after a time delay of 0.5 second. So this is the backup concept uh, that is uh, after one second from the occurrence of fault. Uh, so this is the explanation. Uh, but there is one disadvantage of this system that if there are number of feeders in the series, the tripping time for the faults uh, near the supply end becomes high. Uh, like you can see the two seconds in this case if you add them. However, uh, in most cases it is not necessary to limit the maximum uh, tripping time to two seconds. So. Uh, this disadvantage can be overcome to a reasonable extent by the use of inverse uh, time relay which is the second method. So students if you uh, face difficulty in understanding uh, you can recall our the uh, lecture about overcurrent in which we will discuss about discrimination of faults. Uh, the second method is the using inverse time relay. As you can see from the figure which shows an overcurrent protection of a radial feeder uh, using inverse time relay in which the operating time is inversely proportional to the operating current. With this arrangement, the farther the circuit breaker from the uh, generating station, the shorter is its uh, relay operating time. The three relay as you can see from the figure A, B and C are assumed to have inverse time characteristic. A fault in section B, C will give relay times which will allow breaker at B to trip out before the breaker A. So likewise uh, this will solve the problem that we faced in uh, by using our first type that is uh, definite time relay. Uh, the second we have the parallel feeders in the time graded protection scheme. Well in parallel feeders where continuity of the supply is particularly uh, necessary because uh, the system is uh, feeded from the two, uh, two sided. Uh, the two parallel feeders may be installed uh, so whenever uh, a fault occurs on one feeder it can be uh, disconnected from the system and uh, the continuity of the supply can be maintained from other feeders like uh, we have discussed previously uh, if a company uh, that needs a continuity of a power supply and uh, it will get uh, very much disturbed uh, when a fault occurs and uh, there is no supply so they can have a parallel feeder system. So the parallel feeders cannot be protected by non-directional overcurrent relays only because uh, you have two-way supply so it is necessary uh, to use the directional relay also and to grade the uh, time setting of the relay for selective tripping. So how this time graded scheme uh, works in parallel feeders uh, we will understand by a diagram. As you can see in the figure that shows the system where two feeders are connected in parallel uh, between the generating station and the substation. Uh, now the protection, uh, what is the requirement of the protection system at this stage? There are two major requirements. The first requirement is each feeder has a non-directional overcurrent relay at the generator end. Uh, these relays should have inverse time characteristic. The second uh, requirement is each feeder has a reverse volt power or directional relay at the substation end. Uh, well, these relays should be instantaneous type and operate only when power flow in the uh, reverse direction. So so why this uh, requirement? Uh, because uh, suppose an earth falls on feeder 1 uh, as you can uh, see in figure it is 
desired that only circuit breaker A and the point P should open to clear the fault, whereas feeder 2 should remain intact to maintain the continuity of the supply because our major motive uh, is to maintain the supply. So in fact, the above arrangement accomplished this job. Uh, you can see via two routes, number one directly from uh, feeder one via the relay A and uh, the B part is uh, from the feeder two via B, Q, substation and B, the two parts. So uh, therefore, the power flow in the relay Q will be in normal direction, but in the reverse uh, in the relay P. This caused the opening of the circuit breaker at P. So uh, this is uh, the second uh, scheme uh, for parallel feeders because whenever we uh, talk about uh, parallel feeders there are some sort of uh, complexity but uh, by using the directional uh, overcurrent relay in this section the complexity uh, become lesser. The third one we have ring main system. Well in this system various power stations or substations are interconnected by alternator uh, route uh, uh, forming a closed ring that's why it is called a ring main system. Uh, there are some uh, disadvantages as well as many advantages for this system so in case of a damage to any section of the ring that section may be uh, disconnected for repairs and the power will be supplied from the both ends of the ring thereby maintaining the uh, quantity uh, sorry continuity of the supply so how this system uh, will work in terms of protection uh, we will discuss in our next slide. So as you can see in the figure uh, a short ring main system is designed just for the sake of example uh, because it is a single line diagram of a typical ring main system uh, it consisting uh, of one generator that is represented by G and uh, in this ring main system, the four substations are uh, located in S1, S2 and S3 and S4 that you can see in the figure. So in this arrangement, uh, power can flow in both directions uh, under fault conditions. So this is the critical point. Therefore, uh, it is necessary to grade in both directions. Uh, round the ring and also to use the directional relay. So in order uh, that only faulty section of the ring is isolated under fault conditions, the types of relay and their time setting should be as follow. Because just remember in parallel feeder we have uh, in parallel uh, feeder we have the two uh, supply system to maintain the continuity and in this ring main system we have the complete ring so it will uh, be more complex than the uh, parallel uh, feeder because if the fault occurs the whole system uh, is uh, in, totally in stress so uh, what will be the time setting for this figure uh, the point one is uh, the two lines leaving uh, the generating stations should be equipped with non-directional current over relay. Uh, so what are the, these two lines on the left side you can see the point A and point J uh, these two relays. Now the point 2 is at each substation reverse power or directional relays should be placed in both incoming and outgoing lines. So what are uh, the points for 
the relays that is relay B, C, D, E, F, G, H and I. So in the third case, in the third point, there should be proper relative uh, time settings of the relay. Uh, for example, uh, going around the loop, we have G, S1, S2, S3, S4 and again G. So it is just completing the loop. And the outgoing relays uh, that is A, C, E, uh, G and I are set with uh, decreasing time limits. Now these time limits are also mentioned uh, like for A uh, 2.5, for B uh, 0.5, for C 2 seconds, D is 1 second, E is 1.5, uh, J is for 2.5, I is 4.5, H is for 2 seconds and G is 1 second and F is uh, 1.5 seconds. Uh, so uh, the above arrangement uh, which I have mentioned about the time, the power will fed uh, to the fault by two routes from G around S1 and S2 and the second path can be from G around S4, S3. So it is clear that the relays at A, B, C and D as well as uh, J, I, H and G will not trip. Therefore, only relays at E and F will operate before any other relay operates because of their uh, lower time setting. So, uh, as this is the main ring system, uh, ring main system, so its protection will be complex because you have to uh, maintain the complete ring so, as um, I talked earlier about the stress of the system because uh, if the system get stress and uh, if the fault occurs so you can see that uh, a lot of tripping occurs and the whole system get disrupted. Uh, the second method is uh, differential pilot wire protection. Uh, well, the differential pilot wire protection is based on the principle that uh, under normal conditions the current entering one and uh, end of the line and uh, is equal to the uh, leaving the other end. In short, uh, we can say that uh, basic KCL. So as soon as a fault occurs between the two ends this condition no longer is hold and the difference of incoming and outgoing current is uh, arranged uh, to flow through a relay which operates the circuit breaker to isolate the faulty lines. So uh, there are also uh, two basic methods which divide this scheme so, which we'll discuss in our next slide. Uh, well, the types, if we discuss about the types of differential wire protection, uh, there are two basic protection schemes. Uh, we will discuss uh, for the line protection. Uh, number one is merge price voltage balance system and number two is the translate schemes. We will discuss uh, these schemes in details with their Schematic diagram. Uh, well, the first method is merge price voltage balance system. The same merge price current circulating system we already discussed in our generator protection. So, we will uh, discuss in detail about merge price voltage balance system in this transmission line protection. So, as you can see in, in the figures uh, which shows the single line diagram of uh, merge price voltage balance system uh, for the protection of a three phase line. Uh, identical current transformers are placed in each phase at the both end of the lines. The pairs of CTs in each line is connected in series with a relay. 
the relay is connected in such a way that under normal condition their secondary voltages are equal and in opposite uh, so that they balance each other like you can see in the figure on the left side uh, and on the uh, right side you uh, it contains both ct and it is uh, uh, shown by ct1 and ct2 so what will happen uh, under healthy condition uh, the current entering the line at one end and is equal that leaving it at the other end therefore uh, equal and opposite voltage are induced in the secondaries of the CTs at the two ends of the lines so uh, the result is that no current will flow uh, through the relays uh, but in the second case uh, what will happen uh, when a fault when a fault occurs at the point F as you can see in the figure uh, this will cause a greater current to flow through the CT1 that is on the left side uh, than through the CT2 consequently their secondary voltages become unequal and a circulating current uh, which uh, flows through the pilot wires and what are the pilot wires we have discussed in details in our previous lecture about the pilot wires uh, that for this purpose the circuit breaker at the both ends of the line will trip and the faulty line will be isolated like in the previous slide uh, we have discussed the system uh, the MERS price voltage balance system for single phase so we can uh, make a system for three phase as you can see from the figure uh, it is a three phase system uh, just like in the single phase system you have uh, one CT on the left hand side and the uh, second CT on the right hand side but now this is the three phase system you have three CTs on the left hand side and the three CTs on the right hand side same as the case you have three relays on the on the left hand side and three relays on uh, the right hand side so nothing new uh, in this just like the operation is just like the uh, single phase so we have uh, converted in into the three phase schematic diagram uh, well uh, we can discuss about some of the advantages uh, of this uh, merge price voltage balance system um, this system can be used for ring main as well as parallel feeders this is the most important feature of this system uh, same as this system provide instantaneous protection for ground faults uh, this decrease the possibilities of these faults involving other phases uh, along with that this system provides instantaneous relaying which reduce the amount of damage to overhead conductor resulting from arcing faults the arcing faults is very much uh, common in overhead conductors uh, same as the case we have some disadvantages regarding this merge price voltage balance system uh, accurate matching of CTs is very essential uh, as we discussed earlier that uh, we have uh, a very serious problem if uh, the CTs uh, didn't match properly because this causes a serious false tripping. Uh, second one is if there is a break in the pilot wire circuit the system will not operate definitely if the pilot wire can break into the point the system will not work and the relay will not operate. Uh, the third point is the system is very expensive owing to the uh, greater length of pilot wires uh, as we discussed earlier uh, that if the size of the uh, if the length of the pilot wire increases uh, already uh, the cost will increase uh, and uh, in the very first lecture uh, we will discuss we discussed about uh, the costing of the protection system because if we made a system which is very much costly so uh, it is not possible uh, to uh, operate that system uh, properly uh, and no one uh, wants that type of protection that is too much high in cost 
so uh, we need to be very economical in this case the fourth point is uh, this system cannot be used for line voltages uh, beyond 33 kV because of the constructional difficulties in matching the current uh, transformers so students this point is very important as we already discussed the matching of uh, current transformers because in the larger transmission lines like 132 kV 220 kV and uh, uh, 500 kV the magnitudes of the current uh, becoming uh, very high so a small mismatch in the cts uh, cause a very serious problem uh, which uh, tends to the system uh, cause false operation and when a false operation occurs on a transmission line so it will not uh, affect a small town it will uh, affect a complete uh, part of a specific region for example if a 500 kv line trips so uh, there is very serious consequences on the uh, the subsystems so we have to be very careful uh, while designing the system or while applying any type of protection scheme uh, the third method uh, is the uh, the second method is the transfer schemes uh, as you can see in the figure this system is similar to the voltage balance system except that uh, here balance or opposition is between the voltage induced in the secondary windings which is wound on the relay magnet and not uh, between the secondary voltage of the line current transformer well this permit to use uh, cts of normal design and eliminates one of the most serious limitations uh, the of the original voltage balance system namely its limitation to the system operating in voltage is not exceeding uh, 33 kv so that's why we can use uh, this type of uh, this method of the protection as compared to the our first method so how uh, this method work uh, we will see in so uh, if we talk about the uh, schematic arrangement for this scheme so we can see in the figure uh, the transfer uh, scheme the relays used in this scheme are essentially uh, the overcurrent induction type relays uh, each relay has two electromagnetic elements the upper element carries a winding uh, like 11 or 11a which is energized as a summation of uh, transform transformer from the secondaries of the line cts connected in the phase of the line to be protected well the upper element also carries a secondary winding that is 12 or 12a which is a connected is series with the operating winding 13 or you can see 13a on the lower magnet same as the case the secondary winding 12 and 12a and operating winding the 13 and 13a are connected in series in such a way that the voltage induced in them oppose each other so this is uh, the arrangement of the whole uh, transfer system uh, due to the electromagnetic part you can see some uh, complexity uh, now we will see how this uh, transfer scheme works in our next so uh, if we can see in the figure when the feeder is sound the current at its two end are equal so that the secondary current in the both set of the cts are equal so in this case the current flowing in the relay primary winding that is 11 and 11a will be equal and they will induce equal voltage in the secondary winding that is 12 and 12a so this bar uh, needs to be separated now now what will happen since these windings are connected in a position so no current flow in them or in operating windings that is 13 and 13a so in the event of a fault on the protected line the line current and one end must carry a greater 
current than that at the other end. This is the second part. In first part, we will dis uh, we discussed about 11 and 12 point, and the second one is 12 and 13. So what will happen? The result is that the voltages induced in the secondary winding 12 and 12A will be a different and the current will flow through the operating coils 13 and 13A and the pilot circuit. So under these conditions both upper and lower elements of each relay are energized and forward torque acts on the each relay disc. Uh, it is little bit complex but if you divide it in the parts and like I uh, uh, said in three parts like the first part the 11 one the second part the 12 and the third one is 13. Now uh, the operation of the relay will open the circuit breaker at the both ends. Uh, one more important thing about uh, this system uh, we must know that what happens if the fault occurs. Uh, so you can suppose that uh, if a fault occurs between the R and Y uh, we have a three phase system. So what will happen if the fault occurs uh, between phases R and Y and is fed from both sides. So this will energize only section 1 of the primary windings 11 and 11A and induce voltage in the secondary winding 12 and 12A. So therefore the current will circulate through the operating coils 13 and 13A and the pilot circuit. So this will cause the relay contact to close and open the circuit breaker and the both ends. So a fault between the phases Y and B energize the section of two primary windings 11 and 11A where as the uh, bet um, the result between the R and B will energize the section. 1 and 2. So this is one complete part uh, that we suppose that what will uh, what will happen if the fault occurs between uh, the two phases that is R and Y. Uh, now most importantly uh, we say that suppose that an earth fault occurs on phase R. The first part is almost completed. This is the second uh, supposition about earth faults. So what will happen if the fault occurs on phase R that is red. This will energize the section 1, 2, 3 of the primary windings 11 and 11A. Again if the fault is fed from the both ends uh, the voltage induced in the secondary windings 12 and 12A are additive and cause a current to flow through the operating coils that is 13 and 13A. Same is the case uh, the relays therefore operate to open the circuit breaker at both ends of the line. Uh, in the event of the earth fault on phase Y and section 2 and 3 of the primary winding 11 and 11A will be energized and cause the relay to operate. So, an earth fault on the phase B will energize only section 3 of the relay uh, primary winding that is 11 and 11A. So, uh, the first condition is about the fault between two phases and the second condition is about the earth fault that occurs on the phase R. So, uh, we can understand the whole uh, the scheme just by this single uh, uh, schematic diagram and uh, if we divide into the stepwise so we have a complete and clear understanding. It will be a little bit complex uh, but if you divide into the parts like I did so it will be 
uh, easier to understand. Uh, there are some advantages for this translate scheme uh, like the system is economical as only two pilot wires are required for the protection of a three phase line same as the case uh, we have CTs of normal design can be used uh, like in differential scheme uh, we have to uh, use a specific specifically very matched CTs which is very difficult and that's why we have restrictions uh, on usage uh, up to the mark of 33 kV. Likewise we have the pilot wire capacitance uh, current uh, that do not affect the operation of the relay. Uh, because in the differential scheme we have seen that the pilot wire uh, cause a serious problem and also the increment uh, in cost cause a serious uh, the third method is the distance protection uh, the distance protection we have already discussed in complete uh, detail uh, you can refer back to uh, our previous lecture that is lecture 9 in which we have uh, discussed complete distance protection, the zones and uh, all of the uh, issues regarding uh, distance protection. So you can refer lecture 9. Well that's all from the bus bar and uh, line protection section. So in our next lecture we will discuss about the motor protection. Uh, thank you very much.